when people start with character rotation, they draw their feet flat like this, right? That's very, very common. And then the legs go straight up. But this is the opposite of the structure that Sheridan so loves. So I'm going to teach you guys how to plant your characters carefully. So in order to do that, pretend like you're, you're eye level. You guys have talked a lot about eye levels. You're kind of like standing at eye level with the character. You're not like super high or super low. You're not right at their feet level like this drawing is right here. Because that's what this is indicating, right? That the horizon line of this is like right there. But really, you want the horizon line to be like exactly with their eyes, wherever that happens to be. So the feet are really going to be much more on this kind of angle, something like this. So it's not really coming directly at the viewer. This is a bit of an extreme pose. I'm going I'm to redo this. But yeah, and I've also made grid lines on mine. You guys don't have that, but your, all of your characters are going to be different, so you're going to need your own grid lines. Um, it's helpful to do this, because basically what I'm going to do, you guys are have an easy, even easier situation, because you have uh, the sheets that you can lay over each other, and they're thin enough that you can easily see through. So I don't, I wouldn't, if you guys have blue, non -photo, non, not non-photo blue, but the, just the blue color race pencil, that one would be easier to use this, because you want it to be dark enough so that you can put paper on top, and kind of like draw on top of the previous drawing. That's the idea. That's why this paper is nice, because it's so thin, um, which I recommend doing this for your portfolio, too, is drawing on top of your previous drawings. Um, yeah? Oh, great. That's, that's awesome, too. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this platform. So Sheridan, lucky for you guys, only requires, um, I think, I think it's a uh, front, three quarter front and side view. I think, and and back back view as well. Yeah, um, we just checked it was front, two quarter front, side, and back, three quarter back. What? No back. I thought they took out the three quarter back. Oh, I'm not playing here. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I, I could have sworn that they took it out. There's four of these now, three beers. OK. There's three beers today. Four. Four. Not five. OK. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I guess it is three quarterbacks. Because, yeah, I remember they took out something, but I thought it was more significant than the uh, The three quarterback is difficult. If anyone is drawing that on the character already, you'll know that. Um, it's just kind of awkward to work out. And there's a reason. This is one of the most technical, technically demanding of all the character stuff we've done so far, because you have to have everything line up kind of just perfectly. But then there's also, yeah? Sorry, um, it's front three, uh, three quarter front view profile and three quarter back view. That was not Okay, so it is three quarter back view. Well, that sucks. That's the most difficult pose. But anyways, it's good practice. So. Basically, this is where you really get to know your character really well, because this is going to be their neutral expression. And for example, if I did like a normal, a normal kind of character pose, nothing too special. Just sketching it out for now until I get to the, the details. So from this view, say it's just something very normal like this. What is this? This is a fine pose to draw, but what, what is this not telling me? What is some of the information I'm not going to get from the front view? I'm not going to get them from your Charlotte. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't really have a stance, so it doesn't like the character so far in the middle. Yes, that's a good point. What else? Yeah? There's no face. I just didn't draw the face in here. I was going to ask if that was the whole character. Okay, there's a face. Anyone else? What is? What can I not get from the front view? Yeah? Um, there's no like, working expression. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't worry about the expressions. Oh. <laughs> I just basically haven't drawn them yet. I mean, period. What can you not get from front views at all? Yes, yes. <laughs> that is very literal. <laughs> yeah. Costume. Yes, exactly. And and like the way that they carry themselves, right? Because this character, for all I know, I don't know where. Like, I could know where the knees are a little bit, but even if they were here, for all I know, the character from the side view might look like this. And this can still work, right? If you look at the measuring that I've done, so these knees are still pretty much in line. The waist is still pretty much in line. But maybe this character has this like giant hunchback thing like this. And that they have a face like this. See, all of this character, even though it looks vastly different than this one, could still work. 
these, these are two compatible drawings because what I don't get from the front view is any sense of depth. And that's why it's so difficult to draw features that are coming at you or hands or arms that are coming at you because you, do, you have to kind of fake the depth. Like when you're doing something foreshortened and some, say an arm is coming at you and you kind of have like uh, awkward angles of all the limbs, right? And then there's like an arm circle usually and then there's like a shoulder circle. So you kind of like, I'm just kind of faking the illusion of something coming at you. But like really, it's really difficult to do that. So basically, this is where you want to work out your character's personality really comes out. How are they going to stand? Are they going to slouch? Are they going to push their chest out? Like we could have the, uh, the opposite thing kind of happening here, right? They could be like really, yep, really, really upright for all we know from the front view. And this head could be like way back here. So there's a lot of information we don't get from the front view and we don't get from the profile view. From the profile view, like we might, uh, we'll see the depth of things. Like say we have a nose on the front view. It's like that looks like a normal nose. But again, for all we know, this nose is huge and overbearing. <laughs> see, that still works, right? If I really had a nose like that, I would probably make a little bit of an indication of depth even here. But really, it's hard to indicate that whole volume from, from the front view. So the side is what gives you the depth, and the front is what gives you the, the actual width of things. Because, for example, I might have, like, what's the difference between an eye being here and an eye being kind of back here? What, what is this one going to indicate if it's way back? So these are two different eyes, say, like, there, there's one character with that kind of eye, and then there's another character with this kind of eye. What does that mean? Yeah? Um, well, I guess the one that's farther away is like kind of more cartoony, whereas the one closer to... Funny. Yeah, maybe. That, that's one way of seeing it. But basically, all, all that I'm really looking for is that this one means that the eyes are much wider apart from the front view, right? So if these are where our eyes are, like this, this eye here... This is, if you look at the distance, think about how short this distance is to that middle. So what that means is, I mean, I don't really get into the math of this too much, but like what that basically means is that you're taking that little width here, whatever that is, like, I don't know, ten, five cent millimeters or something, and you're doubling it like this on either side, and then that's how close the eyes are, basically. You can always fake it a little bit. So this is kind of strange. So whereas the other eye, this one, since it's so far away from the middle, that means that he's got a real, like, core line thing going on, right? So that's what's more happening with this one. And then with this, and another thing is ears. Like, from this angle, again, I got that same problem with the front view, where I could have a perfectly normal little, little ear like this. And then from the side view, maybe that's like... Do you see what I'm saying, though? Like... But you need both angles. That's why you always want to emphasize... Okay, i got to get rid of this. I can't look at this anymore. <laughs> but you need to have both angles, and then basically you're going to take those both angles and make a nice three-quarter front view, which is typically the most difficult, depending on what kind of character you have. So again, we don't know what our character is like yet. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a complete character now. Because this thing looks like some kind of strange alien. Uh, so let's see. So I usually start with the feet. I find that's one of the best places to start from so that you're kind of aware of your center of balance. It can be helpful just to draw a little center line too. Um, so I, I plant the feet and also consider how far apart are the feet. You know, what does is, what is feet together kind of imply personality-wise? Feet together or even like inwards a little bit? What is that going to give you? Could be. He's shy, yeah. yeah. It's funny that you trip you turn into that. <laughs> shy. That's definitely a disnified yeah. character type. But yeah, like just like this kind of thing means like you're trying to like hide basically. Whereas this is kind of like more of an open natural stance. That's another thing that I was saying to some of you when you were doing the, the rotation earlier, is that the feet, the feet even from they don't they don't just come straight forward unless they're a robot. 
um, they're usually kind of coming out more at an angle a little bit. Not too much, but just like a natural stance, stance is something, something like this. Just slightly, kind of more at like a, like 20 degrees from the middle of either side, right? So it's something like that. So that means from the side. So what would this look like from the side? Are we just going to draw like one foot like this and then just assume that the other foot is behind it? No, you're going to draw both feet. So that means you need to think about how far apart are these two feet from the middle here, right? There's this much distance. So that should be implied in the side view as well. So there's one foot maybe like this. And then I look at that. I mean, it's back in perspective, so it's not as... So the other foot's going to be like this or something, right? So say... I'm going to give them a bit of a S-curve, as they say. So this is my general. So again, I'm not gonna. I might not get too much of this from the from the front view. This is all you're gonna really see. So the knees are splayed out a little bit. It's kind of more of a springy, agile character, maybe. Still works with this view. So then I'm gonna add. So this knee. So if I say that, so these knees are about right here. They're gonna be a little bit lower in the side view. Because the side, with the side view, the, the legs are coming closer to us. From the front view, they're back more. So it's not going to be exactly the same height, uh, but the knees are going to be lower and higher because the one in the background is going to be here, going there. It's kind of difficult because they're overlapping, but they, they sh you should be able to see both feet from the side view unless they've really got feet close together, something like that. Also, in terms of drawing feet, if they have bare feet, for that matter, um, from the front view, you don't really you see more than just like it's usually like a big toe, a big toe, and a heel that kind of comes in a little bit. The ankle bone. This is more of a realistic kind of character, like Tarzan or something. So this is kind of the typical front view. The feet splay out a fair bit, depending on the character. So that's kind of what you see from the front view. So if you think about this eraser is gigantic. Um, from the front view, like if you look at your feet, they kind of go in. On the outside, it's kind of flat. On the inside, it kind of goes in and then pops back out at your heel. That's the exaggerated version. So that's why there's usually a little bit of a, of a dip here, like from the top view, you're going to get like big toe. It's kind of like this, right? That's kind of your footprint. It's like it does a bit of a weird shape in the strong heel back here. So men have even bigger mounts at the front here, I think. They have more space up here. Um, but yeah, so this this little pocket, that space right there, that's what creates that, that in and then out, which is exaggerated because it's coming towards you. Like foreshortening is always a little bit exaggerated. Does this foot make sense? Does anyone get how that kind of works? It's not just like, it's not just straight. I mean, you could, but this would be very graphic, very graphic kind of character. So that's fine, but yeah, it's not not much detail. You could add, you could definitely add more more structure. And this is what Sheridan is talking about when they mean structure. By the way, is like overlapping lines, like this here implies form. And if these angles overlap this form, that makes sense. Uh, that kind of thing, all those little little subtle things add structure in the same way that like the knee and however you draw the leg is going to help with that structure too. Right? So you can caricature it a hundred different ways, but those are some of the actually maybe I won't uh, I'll just push push that somewhere else. All right, flying legs. All right, so, yeah. Hips, I've got to think about how much space they occupy. Like if you have like a, I don't know, like a hillbilly type character, they might have a big like waist kind of area, right? With like the, um, what are these called? These things. Suspenders, that's it, yeah. So you might have like this kind of thing going on. So really like play with your shapes. Like 
I'm going to have this little cylinder at the waist, and then the upper body is going to like fan out a little bit. This is going to be like a farmer character. And then the width. So again, most of the width of this character is is you're not going to really see too much of it from the from the side view. But again, how I'm letting that body sit is still up to me. So I might have like this bucket here. This is a weird character, but it's going to be fun. Something like this, and then maybe the chest. But look, see how I went too high there? See how far back the chest goes? This is going to have to round off at about here. But I do want a fair bit of volume at that upper, at that top half there. And then the arms. So when you, when I'm holding my arm just naturally, which uh, you're all going to get different angles. But which, which side does it favor? Would you say? The arm as it's coming towards you. Like, would you say it's more closer towards the front or the back? And it depends on the person too, right? Some people are like this. Some people are like this. Some people even have like sunken chests. Like some teenage boys have like that almost inverted chest thing going on. But obviously, you want to like you want to have a wide diaphragm. That's why you breathe in deeply. But some people don't have that. So typically, arms, like in a very normal kind of character, they favor the back. They should be a little closer to the back. Like the kind of natural, uh, like say I'll do a male for now, just for. So basically, the arm typically is like around here. Then you have the shoulders. And then the 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 abs are actually pretty straight typically, but then there's the arc of the lower back. So remember earlier in life drawing as well, I talked about straight versus curve using that design throughout your character. So that really makes sense. If you think about it, straight stomach, rounded back typically, and then rounded upper back, and then kind of straight angled chest is typically what you'll see. And then same with the front of the legs. The front of the legs on a kind of standard male are rounded upper leg, flat back leg, where the hamstrings are. It's typically more flat. And then the lower leg is flatter with rounded muscles of the back. So that's kind of your archetypal male proportion. So really, any time that you can, try to use those straights versus curves. So if I'm designing an arm and it's just kind of a round shape on either side, consider straightening one side for just to add visual interest, like this. And then there could be a kind of rounded shoulder. Maybe another rounded muscle here. It's going to be kind of a beefy character, as farmers often are. And so, yeah, so that's kind of the width of my arm. So he's got, he's got very, very thick arms. But I might taper them gradually. Also, with them, with sleeves, there's kind of an infinite amount of things to talk about with character design. So I'm just going just gonna to kind of come talk about things as I come to them. Um, with sleeves, in any kind of like wrinkled fabric, you want to try to simplify that as much as possible, right? Because you're still thinking like how to design with economy of line. Remember how we talked about economy of line? It's that idea of trying to get the most out of your lines. So a lot of these characters are great examples of that, w with the exception of pretty much 3D characters. So some of the How to Train Your Dragon characters in here, they have a lot of details. But they know that they're going to be doing it in 3D. In 3D, you can kind of put as much detail as you want. But they still focus on like big shapes, big silhouettes. So. Yeah, you can you can add quite a bit of detail, but you still want to really simplify your your lines as much as possible, just for your own ease, because it, it'll add to a it'll make a stronger design that way. So I'm kind of just like adding some wrinkles at the at the wrist. Um, when you're drawing these, by the way, if you're using two blues, ideally you want to actually leave. You know, has anyone seen shared in portfolios where they leave all the circles in the joints when everything's bending? You want to leave those circles in. Um, so, for example, here, where the arm's coming out of the socket there, you're going to see this whole circle. Whereas at the, at the elbow, the arm's actually facing down, right? So the circle is going to be facing downwards. So this, this circle is going to be more like this, more of a, a flattened ellipse. So that's something to keep in mind. You're not just going to have big, big circles at every joint. You want to have them actually represent the form. 
So yeah, this is a strange beefy character. And uh, hands are up to you. I mean, you can make it a fist, you can make it just loose. This, so your natural resting hand pose is pretty much like this. Like if you think of just resting, and it's slightly, it's never gonna be straightforward. A lot of people do this, where the hands are like perfectly facing you and straight, but no one really hands, uh, holds their hand that way. So try to make them as natural as possible. So think of what you do naturally. You kind of have your hand slightly angled in and resting, so some of the fingers are slightly bent and the thumb is facing kind of outward. So like this, this is called like the resting hand pose and get used to drawing it because you're gonna be drawing it a lot <laughs> if, you're, if you're a character designer. So from the side, actually I'll do it from the front view first because it's actually trickier from the front view I would say. So let's see where that middle is. That's where the arm is. So I'm making guides for everything, right? So that I know exactly where things go to. So it's gonna be something like this. Also with folds, wherever there's a fold, think of where the, the tension is hanging from. So the stitching of this shirt, as it typically is, is kind of like going here in the sleeve. So the tension is gonna be hanging from like where it's attached to, which is the sleeve. So if I were to draw the wrinkles, it'd be kind of like, it'd be compressed down here and then going up here like that. Does that look kind of somewhat realistic, drapery? Drapery is tricky, I find, but uh, it's good to practice it for sure. So it's concentrating areas where drapery is bun bun bunched up, obviously, but then it, it hangs. So get used to that hang and try to minimize lines whenever possible. I might even just get rid of this one. Um, so the arm, I'm just going to get to that hand. Drapery. D-R-A-P-E-R-Y. And... Um, I just want to show you, there's like one book that's like the book of drawing drapery. And this, of course, is not it. Where the heck is it? Weird. It's like just so, it's referenced all the time. Oh, I think this is it. No. Oh, wait a second. Maybe it is. Hmm, shoot. I have the book back there. I'll, I'll show you guys that break. But drapery is definitely worth uh, getting into because I'm like, again, I... I didn't spend as much time on drapery as you don't actually in, in art school, I find, unless you're going to like fine art or something. And I'm like really feeling it now. I like, the drapery is one of my weakest areas along with like animal drawing. So like people naked, no problem. Like any different angle naked, fine. But, but drapery is like such a challenge for me, which sucks because everyone's pretty much always wearing clothes in illustration. So, in animation. So you really, it's good to get at least half decent at drapery. Okay, so again, the arm, the lower half kind of start, comes in a little bit, um, but it's just kind of hanging, nothing, nothing that special. Um, so the hands typically kind of go out a little bit, and then the thumb. And then so again, from this view, you see most of the outside of the hand, right? So naturally, you, you just kind of see most of this side. You don't see too much of the inside, unless they're like this for some reason. I can't imagine why your character would be standing like this, but... Again, typically just resting like that. So you might see a little bit of the, the mound of the hand. And then the knuckle. It's kind of like this. And then you'll see a little bit of the other finger. And adding that other finger is crucial because it implies depth in your hand. It's not just, just, just going to look flat, which is great. So it might look, I might even add a third finger in there. Maybe the back of that. So again, that, that works, right? That's an okay looking hand. It feels a little bit forced. It feels like it's forced out a bit. So rather than change the hand, I might actually just um, do this. Magic of Photoshop. So this actually feels even more natural. It just, it's just following a little bit better, following a little bit better, I think. So yeah, so some crucial things here. Um, it, like if I were to simplify this even further, if it was even more graphic, I would still have a bit of the knuckle of the thumb. You could simplify that into one piece. You could simplify that into one curve. So long as there's still a little bit of depth implied. You'll see this a lot. I'm giving him kind of the French fry hands, but you can change these very simply. 
And thing, t fingers obviously taper off too, so you can thin the fingers too. So this hand pose, you want to get really, really used to drawing from multiple angles too. From the back view, you're going to see more of the actual uh, inside of the hand. Might even have a line to indicate that. Something like this, right? So I've drawn a lot of hands, so I can do this kind of fast, but uh, I know that hands are tricky, and they take a long time to get used to. Uh, so be patient with them, but also draw them a lot. Like, as much as you can, get used to drawing hands, because like I said in light drawing, they can take as long as the pose, whatever the pose is. That's why in light drawing, I say just, just do like a hand pointing, and then glove the rest of the fingers, and if you can get the thumb in there, but that's it, and then move on. Like that's that's all you want in a in a gesture, especially. It's just too much detail to have to deal with. Um, so yeah, hands are super important. Again, the feet. If you're drawing shoes, think about whether there's um, you know, if if it's just a pointed shoe, it'll just kind of go down like this. Um, what's a character that has pointed shoes like this? A lot of bigger characters actually do. I think ironically, because it's kind of like tapers inwards to be a little tiny thing. Um, but also, there might be a bump at the front. If it's like kind of, if it's a shoe that goes like this, and then kind of comes up like that, for whatever reason, um, then you're going to see a little bit of a structural line here, right? Like that. So that's kind of what that shoe is going to look like from the front view. So always think of, Having some overlapping lines like this that, that imply form and depth, that's how you can get the most out of your lines. You want to try to maximize the lines for what you can do with them. Um, what else is difficult in character? So, okay, uh, with any kind of fabric, um, so he's just got a shirt here. So notice how I didn't just cut the shirt like a straight line across. It goes around the form. And better yet is to have... Um, so these drapery lines, as you can see, if you have like overlapping drapery lines like this, because that's what shirts do, right? Like they're bunched up, they do different things. Try to make them look as natural as possible. And also draw the back of it, right? Like this. So this has a, quite a bit of depth, right? There's quite a lot here. That's implied pretty simply, I think but it kind of makes it feel like it's going around uh, a thick form. Um, so yeah, I would do the same thing up here, round the, these guys a little bit. You might see a little bit of the back. All that little stuff, it's all the subtle stuff that you can get a lot of points on if you, if you know how to use them. Uh, a belt, even like think about the depth of this thing, whatever it is. I'll be going around here. And like, what does that belt look like? Maybe it's slightly asymmetrical. It really helps if you have a mind that is naturally kind of deconstructing things and trying to figure out how they work. That's great for animation because animation is very much about deconstructing reality and kind of putting it back together in fun ways. This leg is so weird with this body. It almost feels like Aladdin or something. Or something. I'll keep the foot just for fun to see what the heck I can do with it. But. Um, so this guy, if you want to draw realistically, uh, it's worth thinking about their torso because their legs and the condition and the uh, physically fitness of their legs is going to really dictate their upper body. So, and of course, there's characters that totally mess with this, where they could have like little thin legs. You know, and that's really fun. Like for sure, go for that. That's like a certain style and it's awesome. But if you want to draw kind of realistically or want to. Yeah, then this guy's going to have pretty big calves, right? Because he's got like a big kind of upper torso. <laughs> he's strange. That was almost got like a weightlifting belt on or something. But uh, anyways, that's what's going to happen. But yeah, I mean, you don't have to draw... I really want to emphasize that. You don't have to draw realistically. You don't have to make sure that muscles look like they could actually hold up the torso. I mean, I, I had one character design teacher that I had drew these tiny little legs for this big polar bear body. 
And uh, he's like, that, those lights could never hold up the polar bear. And I'm like, this is a cartoon. Like, that's exactly why I'm drawing in a cartoon. So I kind of still feel that way. I think, like, you don't have to be ab absolutely accurate. Um, so just, like, have fun. Don't, don't, like, put too much pressure on yourself to make it all work and make sense. For the head, think about how they hold their head. That's really important. Are you going to see a lot of their neck? That could imply, like, intelligence or... Um, being above, like looking over other people. Um, I don't mean like Bailey, you do that. I mean like your character is like yeah. that, right? Okay, great. <laughs> um, so yeah, like if they have a long neck, if their neck is very forward, if they're more of an aggressive character, they might have their head kind of like this guy. Like most most characters would have the head like up here, right? But this guy's kind of like more of a, a working, hard working farmer. So he might have like his head down here. Um, let me get rid of that detail. So for the face, I really recommend as much as you can to uh, make asymmetrical face expressions. You guys know what I mean by that? Like, don't just draw like a neutral nothing. Both eyebrows are out and then down. Try to make it a little bit interesting. So like, put their personality into it. And that's why we do so much work with the character profile, Charlotte. Yeah, I was just about to ask that. Can you like, with uh, the character do they have to be neutral? No, and well. I mean, somewhat neutral, but you can pose them first of all. Yeah. So a lot of people just do standing, but you can make them have a bit of attitude with their pose. Yeah, you could do yeah, this exactly. and like have like one leg taking the weight and the other leg out. That would definitely be a more interesting pose. I would actually say do that for sure. Find find a pose that they would be in, but don't make it like an action pose. Don't do like this or something. Just do like whatever, however they would just hang out and rest. Like maybe they're, and yeah, if if they're kind of. Uh, you know, Sharon, your character, he, he had no expression, right? No emotion. So he might just be like waiting there like as if like, why, why are you guys taking a picture of me kind of thing? So like that has its own attitude, right? You can really put that into your character. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Intentionally because you want to draw the hands. Yeah. You want to draw everything you can and, and show off your drawing ability. That's all that it's about, the portfolio. I hate to say it. And the creativity and all that, but like, if you, you don't, if there's any moment to hide something, don't do it. It's an easy way out. They'll see that it was an easy way out, and they'll they'll for sure get you for that. So like, just yeah, I, any chance. You, in fact, it would be great to draw an action pose that really maximizes the ability of like hand poses. Like that's doing something like this. Do like the most difficult things possible, but so long as you pull it off. Yeah, no, I mean for the action pose. Oh, okay. These are two, two of the yeah. action poses. So like for that, just like put them in really extreme poses, like um, in, in a variety too. So like one that's maybe very action-y, and maybe one's more subtle. So like variety is good too. So things like that. Um, if you guys have any more questions about anything portfolio while I'm doing this, because it'll come up as I'm doing it. So just, just let me know. I'll, uh, I'll answer anything. Um, so for this guy, I'm gonna have him kind of have wide eyes. In fact, I don't like this head shape. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do an old, an old Photoshop sheet here. All right, let's try something fun like this. Uh, something a little weird, and I'm also gonna like. Sometimes I just like making. See, I'm I'm working with a silhouette first. I'm kind of going backwards with all the character stuff we've done so far. I work on the shape first, and this is just me. There's a hundred different ways, but uh, I'm kind of trying to figure out the shape since I'm kind of just making this up on the fly, uh, and then I'm going to figure out the detail after. So again, not super worried. Like, what the heck is this? I have no idea. It's going to work out somehow. Um, so for the eyes, I kind of want to make them have like wide eyes that are also in a weird spot of the head, just for extra challenge. I've drawn a lot of this kind of eye, um, so. Again, don't feel like this is the eye that you have to draw. There's just so many different ways to do it. You can definitely do it more graphic, like this or something, you know, with very little detail. I do recommend, if possible, having some overlapping lines, right? So something like that, where there's just some overlap, but even even then, like you can change the eyes however you like. Um, and again, have a little bit of variation. Don't make them drastically different. But these eyes are not quite exactly the same. That's part of the beauty of doing it by hand and not just, because a lot of the time what I do, I just copy and paste and flip it in Photoshop, because you can do that, obviously. But 
it, it does feel a little a little like it. I've just I've just done some kind of shortcut. <laughs> it's gonna be the sad farmer. Okay, so I've got some eyes going on. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So with the eyebrows, for example, that's a great opportunity to have them be doing slightly different things, even if it's like not not too different. One might um, be saying something slightly different, right? So this is maybe a little bit too obvious. This is a little bit too different. I'll make them a little bit more similar. But see, these eyebrows are doing slightly different things. And if you look at, this is actually a good exercise if you guys can do this. Um, I was telling Ruben about this last week. Each side of the face should say something slightly different. Think about that as much as you can. So like this side, kind of sympathetic, empathetic, a little bit sad maybe. Different than this side, right? More determined, more aggressive, more action oriented. This is a whole exercise that we did in acting class in second year. Yes, there's an acting class at Sheridan that you have to do. Um, and it, you start to look at faces very, very acutely. So like really think about what each side of the face does. So try to think about that when you're designing your, your characters. But obviously you don't have to like make it crazily different. You don't do like one eye open and happy and then one eye angry. Like it doesn't have to be like that. That would look weird or schizophrenic or something. Um, just like subtle, subtle differences. The more that you can get any nuance of subtlety in the acting, that it'll propel you way leagues and leagues and above leagues beyond other people. Um, so that's you guys can take that and I'll do that. And I'll get in, but don't tell anyone else that. <laughs> so the ears. So one thing that I want to be conscious of when I'm designing the character too is that there should be, if you can, repeat shapes somehow. Think about repeating shapes. So like for example, this like this what this this kind of ear would not fit with this character, right? Just doesn't weird, just different style, uncanny valley. Um, whereas like if I did something nice and gentle, kind of like the rest of his head, you can use shock and surprise to your advantage, but it can also get tiresome. I'm gonna have the cheeks kind of come in like this. Um, the nose, again, I'm kind of thinking it's going to be a, a larger nose. And I want to try something that's going to be fun to do from the side angle. I'm going to draw the nostrils in. A lot of character designers don't bother with that. I'll do this thing again. So do you guys remember earlier in this course, I mentioned that if you have a, something bent, um, I'll just add a whole bunch of detail actually so I can show you how that would look from the side view. I'll just make it as difficult as possible for myself and then and then work backwards. Okay, I'm just going to do this nice and fast. I don't know, something like that. Okay. So this eye is a little bit too lazy, actually. I'm going to fix this very subtly. So I have a couple. Uh, I have a couple. Of, just to let you guys know, um, how do I? I'll just show you guys quickly that I, on my channel, I have a whole bunch of uh, videos that are more like. Here we go. So, I do these quick drawing tips. Just lately, I've kind of started adding this, but. Um, where I'll just kind of go through the whole process of designing this head, and I'll talk about it while I'm doing it, and kind of just it just kind of lets you show the whole progress from like sketch to final. So I talk a lot about the same kind of stuff. So if you guys want to hear more of this, then for sure check that out. I'm going to be doing a lot more of that. Oh, that's just my YouTube channel, just YouTube Garth Garth Laidlaw. Um, yeah, it should. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole bunch of them. So yeah. Um, and I talk about this a lot, of like the whole, like just subtle, tiny little changes. See how already this uh, this eye is a little bit, a little bit less lazy, a little bit more active, just by adding a tiny bit more white above. Eyes in particular are some of the most subtle things of, of designing a face. So I really like 
just it's just the subtlest little differences like this, like adding a tiny bit more white above, and suddenly he's a lot more awake. You know, so things like that. Like it's just it's just crazy the difference. Um, okay, so now I'm, I'm just going to do a quick mouth. See, at this point, he looks kind of sad, but then you can easily take that back. He looks a bit like a character from Prince of Egypt. Um, so yeah, little farmer man. His name will be Jonathan or Edric. Edric. <laughs> um, all right, so now I'm going to do this from the side. So the first thing you might say is, how the heck am I going to put that head? Because that's the, that's the height of it, right? I took it right across. That's exactly lined up. So somehow I need to get that head on that body. And it can happen. But what it means, what, what am I going to have to do? Any ideas? And what's funny? Does he suck? You guys hate the design? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. He's like, hey, guys. How's it going over there? Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically what I'm going to have to do is think about this chest volume, first of all and think about what I might have to do to get that head actually in there. So I'll probably have to, considering the chin, it has to be here. Some here, somehow. Um, and it might have like this kind of volume. Again, I always think about shapes first. Eyebrows are here. Yeah, emphasis on most technical part of character design. And then the hair tops out right here. So that's it. That's all I got. So you guys are going to do this manually by just measuring lines across. If you have rulers, that'd be great. Um, so yeah, then the neck could kind of come out wherever, right? But see, that's that posture could be could mean this, right? These could be equivalent. Um, it's a bit strange from the side. I probably would change this a little bit. But uh, in fact, let's just try something. Oh, slightly better, I think. A little bit less extreme. Yes, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, for sure. However, it's not quite as good as drawing right through it. I mean, I can I can do this by lowering the opacity of the, another layer and putting it right behind. But it's like it, it's still the paper's got some got some good tricks too. Um, so with the nose again, I don't know how much this is coming out. But I'm going to have a bend here, just like this little bump indicates. You see that? So that allows me to have a bit of a, a believable bend right here. But I want to have it still pretty rounded. And the nostril, see how the upper nostril is kind of uh, higher up versus just being at the same level like this kind of nose would be. So it's a bit higher up, so it's going to be more like up here kind of. And then... What do I, so again, with the depth thing, yeah, I don't get any depth from the front view. So the lips could be like way out here, like a, an Egyptian prince or something. Or they could be like sunken in. There's a lot of capability. This is where the fun of character design comes in. Because you can just do like any different variation. Like some people have lips that really come out. Some people have lips that are sunken in. Some people have cheeks that are wide. Some people have cheeks that are thin. So you really get to just, but the best way to get a good like visual library for this stuff is to just draw from life. Just draw people in cafes, like notice things, even just like notice people that are walking by, and you'll see like their amazing, crazy, different faces. One of my favorite places to draw actually is uh, at the farmers market where I, I sell my prints and art books uh, every Saturday. Well, most Saturdays, because you just get such a random selection of of people at the farmers market. So. Airports, probably one of the best places because you get people from all over the world. Uh, any place like that, it's just awesome to draw people at. So don't don't waste an opportunity to pull out your sketchbook. I feel like I shouldn't even have to say always have your sketchbook on you. 
that's just part of part of the artist thing. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna pull it out a little bit like this. Be a little bit curvy. Um, and again, it's curving up a little bit, so I want to imply that here too. Like that. Um, the lip again. I've added a little shadow underneath, so it might be like this. And then maybe I'll have like little, a little beard like this. So it's something like this. So what do I, am I, am I going to put the eyes up here? Does that make sense? Definitely, definitely, definitely farther apart. Look at how wide his eyes are here. Look at the space that separates these eyes. I need a lot more space for this eye. So think about, again, this like kind of volume. If I'm to draw like a line to separate it, it's going to come like, Kind of come around here, and then it might be like like here, and also an eye from the side, so an eye from the front, obviously like this or, or something, something similar. This is kind of a realistic eye, I remember, but eye from the side, kind of like this, All right? The lids. This is a bit of a tired eye, but he's a farmer. He's tired. Um, also, the eye's too high, so I got to move this down. So this nose might be a bit high too. You'll find that you'll need to constantly readjust things. You'll add something <coughs> to the side view, got to change the front view. Add something to the front view, got to change the side view. So that we're going to be doing a lot of that today. So get used to that feeling. Um, so it'll be something like this maybe. And then the brow. Again, I don't know how far that brow is coming forward. It could be coming all the way from here, or it could be like right back here. I'm kind of doing somewhere in between, something like this. And I want to look at this eyebrow because it's it's on that side, right? So something like this. And then the hair. The hair is going to have some volume, so it's probably going to be coming forward a little bit. Hair is definitely tricky, though. It takes a while to get used to. Okay, his nose is getting a bit out of control. I'm going to calm it down a little bit. There we go. Yeah, good point. Yeah, good point, Aiden. Uh, yeah, definitely. His cheekbones are pretty wide, so they're going to be way back here. See this whole thing going on? This is going to kind of rotate around here. Actually, you're not going to see that much of a cheekbone, but the ears will at least be here. Um, the hair. So yeah, that's basically my head from the side. So again, the more that you draw from life, the more that you're going to be able to pull from and make interesting characters. Um, this guy's definitely strange. And so we're going to do this for now. We're going to work with the front side. I want to put the ball in your guys' court for a little while. Um, I'm going to do a demo on the three-quarter front in a bit, but it's quite tricky. So let's start with the front and side of your characters, and then we'll uh, I'll check on how you're doing, and then we'll try the three-quarter front. Sound good? And when you guys are doing it, since you don't have all this fancy digital stuff, just, again, do your, do your front and side at the same time. Just do gestures of each and then put one over the other and kind of map it out and figure out where all of your lines need to be. Like where the knees are, where the waist is, where the chest is, where the collar is, where the eyes are. Do all those lines and mapping out with these sheets. You should be able to see through pretty good, so it'll be uh, a little easier. You can also use the face turn style onto a piece of paper pad. Yeah. Okay. You can even keep your drawing, start your drawing like a little bit like don't go on the first page, go on the second page. So then you can put another page in the kit. So you can get back to the sketchbook. Mm -hmm. So you can always have something flipping on top. You know? Because you think that's easy for you. It's pretty fast to trace that, that turn style onto your crease and paper pad. Just why yeah. you have to buy one. Just makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. So if you tend to draw that's a better line, idea, actually. If you have any handed, this will work. But if you have a light hand, Okay. I've even 
Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yellow sticky notes. You just add one and then chain, make a change. That's a great idea. I don't know where they are, but uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, we really we should include that in future packs, just to make drawing changes. Sticky notes are super handy. Like just to like, if you don't like the arm, add a sticky note on top and draw another arm. Add another one on top, draw another arm. You can easily change. It's the same thing that I'm doing. I actually like this character the most of any character that I've done in this camp so far. So oh, I, I, thought I, came with, I thought I came with a sticky note trick myself one time. I mean, one at a time, one character needs pants. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's super handy. Just like make a little change. <laughs> Oh, we're doing those here. Yeah. 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 Okay, gotcha. We have a bean stew and uh, what else would Mark have? Their plentiful sunscreen and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. It doesn't actually explain at the beach. Yeah. This is judging, judging all the people that are on the beach. <laughs> so if you guys want me to check your drawing, I'm going to keep coming around, but if anyone wants to check, need to check anything, just give me a shout and I'll come over. <laughs>